So, anger versus meanness. That's what we were looking at this week. And we are taking a look at all kinds of proverbs here that have to do with the contrast between the angry person who's given to anger, who goes into strife, who's uncontrolled, who just hits the nuclear button, blows everything up. And then we have the contrast with the wise person who's meek, who is slow to anger, who speaks softly, who cools the hotheads, you know, and that kind of person. That's the person we want to be. That's the wise person who is using logic, who's using their intelligence, who's using soft words, not coming back with harsh words, not not going toe-to-toe, uh, anger versus anger, but seeking to do good. So I want to give you two Proverbs as a conclusion. There's some applications here that the Proverbs already gives us. So Proverbs 22, 24 through 25 says, Make no friendship with a man given to anger, nor go with an, a wrathful man, lest you learn his ways and entangle yourself in his snares. This is a direct application from the Word of God, right? This is this is application. So if I am in a situation where I'm with an angry person, someone who's given to anger, what do I do? It says, wisdom says, don't be friends with the person given to anger. If you if don't be friends, the temptation for you, if you do, is that you'll become just like them. We will know these people in the world, but we would do best if we don't make them our close friends. This should be an unequal yoke for us. If this person is a person given to anger, a wrathful person, then we should be unequally yoked. We should not find a wrathful man as a kindred spirit, right? This is not someone we should be able to, like, yeah, this is my best friend, this guy who flies off the handle all the time. That's that's not what, you know, it'd be hard to do that unless, you know, because if you get two of the people that are like that, if you're alike in that way, it's going to end it horribly anyway, right? It's not going to work out. But if you're a, a kind person, a slow to wrath person, and then you have this other person, it, it will tend not to work. You know, this person, if they are refusing to let go of this wrath and anger, and then that's a problem. And so a lot of people who are, uh, you know, abused as children, who are, have problems in, their, in the past, hold on to this anger and become wrathful people. They'll allow this anger towards that... That was righteous anger, right? Because what happened to them was wrong. That was evil. They were, you know, that was something that should have never happened. And the, the, But they will hold on to the anger and allow it to, to become, make them an angry and wrathful person. And it will continue to perpetuate strife and drama and, and anger in their lives. And it will just keep going until, if they can break from that, um, they will... They will find that their lives are hard, and they will find that a lot of the problems that they have are just self-fulfilling. And, um, you know, people won't want to be friends with them because they're prone to this anger. They're prone to go crazy in their anger. And uh, and so this is where the self-control of the Holy Spirit has to come in and begin to change. But this is something we can work on, too. We can learn to not be those who are quick to anger, to to diffuse that um, that ticking time bomb that we might be and that is by you know replacing it with the joy of the Lord like I don't need to be angry <laughs> I can be joyful in the Lord and so there is there so don't make friends with those people that are angry but also don't be the ones don't be an angry person because people shouldn't be friends with you <laughs> if you want friends you want to have a life where people are with you who love you then don't be angry Seek not to be angry. And then Proverbs 19.19, 19, this is the second one. A man of great wrath will pay the penalty, for if you deliver him, you will only have to do it again. This is the ultimate warning, right? A person of wrath will pay the penalty, and they should, for their anger. It's not saying that you should uh, take the penalty for them. It's saying they should pay for it. The warning here is that we should not be an enabler, right? Don't enable people in their sin. That's what this this proverb is, and we we use these words in psychology and stuff like that. But the Bible told us a long time ago what we should do. If this person is prone to angry, allow them to suffer the consequences of their actions. Don't keep covering for them; they need to suffer. That's what it's saying. If you deliver them, you'll only have to do it again, and again and again and again, and because it does, the consequences are there by God to teach them a lesson. 
if you don't, they'll keep acting that way. And they'll keep, you don't have to deliver them again. And eventually you won't be able to do this. Because you, you will end up delivering them all the way into hell. You need to allow the consequences to come to them. To, to be met with their consequences. Ultimately, a person given to anger is in one of these two states. Either they're the fool in rebellion against God. And as Jesus said, they will be liable to the hell of fire. In Matthew 5.22 we should pray that God will bring them to saving knowledge of Jesus and that he will regenerate their hearts. The second state is that they are a Christian who is acting foolishly. This person needs to be called to repentance, and they need to repent. Jesus said, if you are offering your gift at the altar, and there remember that you, your brother has something against you, leave your gift there and go to the, you know, before the altar and go. First be reconciled to your brother and then come and offer your, guilt, your gift. And Paul instructed us, be angry, but do not sin. Do not let the sun go down on your anger. Ephesians 4, 22. So there you go. That's our study on anger versus meekness this week. Come back next week. And